doing this for a long time. Teach people about the world they lost. Help them start to rebuild. So today is April second, two thousand twenty-one. Um, the day in particular is Friday, and uh, in the Christian and Catholic faith, we we celebrate. Um, this Friday as Good Friday. Um, this is the day that we know that Jesus uh, died for our sins, he sacrificed himself for our sins. And for some, for some reason, I feel like there's there's this urge to I don't know, record um, this type of statement of faith, um, a sharing, I guess you could call it. And um, I mean, my journey of faith has been uh, <laughs> a long one. Since growing up, I uh, I grew up very devout, um, Catholic, born and raised um, in a family that um, was very religious and um, very active in my church activities. Even as a kid, I went along with my parents. We attended um, church activities. We attended mass, um, the sacraments, going through catechism, uh, first communion, first confession. Um, even um, being confirmed as a Catholic, um, obviously starting from baptism when I was <laughs> when I was a baby, don't really remember it, but I have pictures. Um, the the thing about you know being born and raised in a religion, uh, the the practices and the beliefs are are basically inherited. And I want to say when I hit um, you know after like the teenage years where I was serving a lot in the the youth ministry of my church and I, I hit college and i there was this uh this phase of life and i think everybody gets to this phase of life of of gaining too much knowledge i guess and um, there was a phase where i got a little bit rebellious um to not just my family to my parents it's it's more of to god and not god in the sense of like i didn't believe in god I would say I probably, no, I would probably say the rebelliousness was towards the practice that I grew up knowing and Jesus Christ and God as like the only way. And I think in the pa in the previous episodes, especially the ones with my sister, we, we talk about uh, certain times that I was challenged in my faith and I defended it um, and other people and other religions almost turned me off in a sense of, you know, of, they turned me off of Christianity um, because of some approach, you know, the the way they approached it and the way they, they tried to, you know, convert people. And, you know, as a Christian, it is considered a duty of ours to, to try to convert people um, because they, we believe and they, they make it known that Jesus is the only way uh, to heaven. And, that challenged me a lot because you know I was so, I was so um, it it was so ingrained in me um, that that was the only belief. And then when you get to that that kind of age in you know maybe your early twenties, mid twenties, um, there for some reason there's this 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 feeling of searching for more answers, and you see the world in a scope, um, in a bigger scope, if anything, and you. You look at all religions and all faith practices and all people that you interact with. You know, once we start stepping onto the world, we start meeting people who aren't necessarily the same religion as us, the same practice. And you know in your heart that these are genuine, authentic people that spread goodness in the world. And that caused me to be a little bit more um, seeking a higher power um, and, and not labeling it, not labeling him, God. Um, and that's why, you know, I'm very careful with how I word things now, especially as a nurse. You know, I worked in I worked in mental health. And I mean, if there's anything that's very sensitive, um, other than politics, right? Um, it's it's religion. When you talk about religion and spirituality with a patient, 
you know, as a nurse, you can't, you can't really give spiritual counseling. There's people at the hospital. There are people that can actually do that with patients, um, and that's their job uh, to be a spiritual counselor, hospital chaplains, things like that. But as a nurse, um, we have to be unbiased as much as possible. We have to be um, neutral in all things and not um, not imposing our beliefs, imposing our practices on a patient. Um, we're not even supposed to be giving advice, ironically, right, as a nurse. So I learned how to kind of maneuver and navigate the world um, by allowing everybody to practice their own religion, to practice their own beliefs. And naturally, it caused me to kind of question and search for new meaning in life. And like I said, um, I never went away from God. Um, what I felt was God was all, all higher powers, all goodness in the world. And people just called him, called it, whatever you believe in, you called it something different. And that's, for me, that's being able to, to allow God to be as powerful as possible. You know, we can't box God in to a specific name, to a, a specific religion, a specific practice. And um, allowing everybody to practice their own, um, for me, spreads more God in the world. Um, like I said, um, in, the, in the past few years and a lot in the, in the past year, um, I've come full circle in my faith. And um, not that I ever strayed away from the Catholic faith, um, but now I, I consider myself um, an even more devout Catholic. So, you know, if, if that offends anybody, I, I apologize. Um, but at this point, I, I, I want to make it known. And um, I, I, I proclaim that with everything of me now. Um, and when, when I say that this past year has changed a lot, it's not simply because of COVID. Um, or because of the, the world that we all live in. I mean, that does play a role in it. I think everybody's kind of searched for a deeper meaning in life. A lot of people have searched for a higher power. And they're finding um, a path. Um, for me in particular, I want to say that fatherhood has brought me full circle to the Catholic faith. Um, I realize more now why my parents raised me um, in this faith. And, you know, my, my family's from the Philippines, and Catholic, uh, Catholicism is, is one of the main um, religions in the Philippines. So the traditions, um, the Filipino traditions are, are heavily based on the Catholic faith and Catholic practice. But not only because of that. Um, becoming a father, I realize now that there's something that you'll have to learn to deal with. And it's more than just working. It's more than just offering yourself for your clients or, you know, your, your company, um, for your friends or the family that's been taking care of you. Um, becoming a father made me realize what it, what it really means to give yourself up for someone else, for something greater, you know? And I thought that this was something that I learned getting married, but now, you know, me and Gracie, we have Amela, and this one simple life uh, is dependent on our lives. She's dependent on us, hand and foot. I mean, at this point, she's about to be one year old um, on, the, on the eighth. And I've seen her grow, and, and I'm blessed to, to have been around her this, this whole year. Um, I've been working from home a lot. Um, just going to the to, to clinical sites, you know, once or twice a week. And it, fatherhood forces you, and parenthood in general. So if you're a mom, and you, you know this, and I respect what mothers do that men, that fathers can't do. There's so much that mothers could do that I can't even imagine um, someone else being able to, to take, you know, to take the reins on. Um Mothers have a very special, a, a very special gift. 
uh, to be a mother and to, to witness, um, for me to witness a mother caring for their child, is, it's one of the most amazing things that I glorify God in, um, that we were created to do certain things like this, and that mothers are created to, to be that type of sacrificial person for their new lives, for the new lives of their children. And parenthood in general, I think it launches everyone and it thrusts everyone into this role of giving of yourself and um, the sacrificial life, if anything, where this person, I mean, at some point they'll learn who you are, but growing up when they're newborns, they don't, they have no idea who you are. All they know is they need this and they need that. And for us as, you know, as humans, as adults that grew up already, we understand what what it takes sometimes. We understand the the energy it takes to do something, the uh, the task it is to just learn something new, to embrace a new role in life. And yet this little person has no idea how much we're going through. And that simple sacrifice of giving yourself because someone else is in need, it brought me full circle to the Catholic faith. I always looked at the Catholic faith as, um, you know, I always, I would always question. My questions would be like, why, uh, why does it have to be so uh, dark? Why does it have to be so grim? And, um, you know, why do they make you feel like you're, you're unworthy of good things in life? Why, why are you unworthy of heaven? And why did, why does there have to be suffering? And these are the questions I had. And even more now, I understand that. The pathway to peace and heaven is actually that sacrificial life. It's that suffering. It's the giving of oneself. And like I said, I understand that even more now. And further than that, raising Mela, it's forcing me to find a path, um, at least to give her in her life. And this is the best, the, this is the best path I know. Um, you know, with, with our egos in the world and, and our, you know, our human desires to be something, to, to be known for something. If we look past that and, and we stop trying to be heroes, we realize that there's a lot of hard work that needs to be done. And a lot of it is uh, silent. A lot of it is in solitude. And the one person, the one thing that can witness that is God. And um, just like Jesus sacrificed silently, you know, like today, it's, uh, I mean, the way of the cross is, is a silent suffering. It's the giving of oneself and not everybody having to know even more people believing the opposite thing, even mocking you for your faith and taking it. You're taking it as, as that individual who even more so asks, asks forgiveness for those people that don't know what they're doing. They don't know the type of life that they're living. They don't know that their way of life might be hurting your way of life. You, that individual who is sacrificing, just accepts that. And what I see now is there's no greater there's no greater sacrifice than to give one's life for someone else. Um, to give one's life for their loved ones. And for some people, for some relationships you might have, you might love someone so much that you can let them go. Or you could let them be on their path and respect their their path. And, I mean, if there was anybody that was the best example for that, it was Jesus, right? Um, I think in some of my talks, especially with my cousins and, and um, my brother, it's, it's that sacrificial life that we always talk about. And yeah, he's the best example, I would say, that um, a man can be person can be so resolute on their path, 
take the mocking, take the uh, the scourging and the you know the whipping, the people spitting in his face, um, them laughing when you ask for simply a uh, a drink of water, and giving them vinegar instead. And yet no complaint came out of Jesus, right? And that that was to me that's, you know, that was so cliché growing up. We knew that this happened, but even more so in my role now, I understand how much that takes. I mean, you know, I don't even know if I understand how much that takes. For the small blip, the small piece, a fraction of what Jesus is actually going through. I think that's already tough. And I I just know that little fraction, right? But now I see how it makes a strong person. It takes a strong person, um, no matter who they are. It takes a very strong person to be devout and to devote their life to something that can't be seen, that can't be, that can't be heard. It takes a very strong person to be bold about their faith and live according to their faith. So now, I mean, in my role, I find a way, I found a way to be able to practice these things. And I mean, my encouragement to the world is is to find your path. And it doesn't have to be the same as everybody else. It doesn't matter if you disagree with me or not, but I have found my path. I've found uh, my my faith practice that's aligned with a lot of my values and principles in life. And I, I'm doing my best to find a way to honor it every day um, as a discipline. You know, I, I think for some reason, um, discipline has been you know, it's been spoken about a lot, obviously, but in the last few years, there's this whole wave of, you know, being disciplined uh, for business, for work, for, you know, for family, for or for just self development. You know, they're saying, you know, discipline is is the key to being successful. So that since that's being preached so much, I'm kind of concerned, and I'm kind of wondering why uh, being a disciple. It's kind of looked in, in, in a bad light. I don't know what that means. Because um, I think people group the word disciple with a specific religion and things like that. But being a disciple of a practice is a person who is fully ingrained and a person that's fully engulfed in that practice. And they're learning all the ins and outs of that practice and the, the deeper meaning of it, the, uh, the higher power in the practice. And that's what being a disciple means. So whatever it is you choose, whatever religion, whatever practice, uh, be a disciple. And it just so happens that I I choose to be a disciple of God, of Jesus Christ. And that's how I best know the higher power. So my message today on Good Friday is, I guess what I've been told growing up, is that there's a day like today where... I mean, they would say historically, um, Jesus gave up his life for the ones he loves. And which, I mean, which is the whole world. What do we learn from that? How does that apply to our life? Um, Whatever, what what I was told growing up was whatever you're going through, whatever pain, suffering, uh, hurt you're going through in life, offer it up. To the Father, to God the Father, and embrace it. Don't push it away. Don't force life to change. Uh, don't resist life from happening. Sometimes you just have to sit and be, um, and just allow it to happen. It hurts. It sucks, and it's it's uh, it's an injustice. But that is what we learned to do. In the Catholic faith. It's to embrace the cross. 
whatever old self we were, whatever old self we want to change, let us die on the cross with Jesus Christ and be born a new person. I think that's the celebration, is that someone can give their life, give everything that they have for someone else, for all of us, if anything. You know, today is is a very solemn day in uh, in church, and however everybody else is celebrating. Um, but there is that that silent hope that I hope everybody is feeling. That it's a time to reflect on the lives that we currently live and how to renew our faith and how to strengthen our bond and how to, to move forward in a, in a better path, a stronger path, a, uh, a more peaceful and a more powerful path. And um, we're, all on that, we're all on that road together. And I think for me, I mean, I just decided to just start recording this morning um, as a, as a morning meditation to kind of figure out what Holy Week is, what Good Friday is again. And, um, you know, whatever path you're taking, let it die. Let it die today. Let go of the hurt. Let go of the frustration of other people. Uh, maybe now's the time. Just maybe we could just embrace one another because I think that's what I think that's what we need to do stick together and give of ourselves so I mean if there's anything that um, I mean I would ask you to do is to find find something to, to give to your higher power whoever that may be.